Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Okay, asking someone how long they believe they were destined for greatness is so stupid, you can't even consider it a topic suitable for idle conversation. And if you still want to know how long I believed that I, Taylor Swift, was going to one day single-handedly change the world, well, I can tell you this, I always knew. Exhibit A, my dad, probably not human. Exhibit B, I'm the coolest kid in my school. So when a mysterious man in a suit showed up during detention and recruited me and my three sidekicks, Link, Normal, and Scary, into an organization called Daddies, and that we were to be tasked with stopping eldritch horrors that infest our world, <laughs> let's just say I wasn't surprised in the least. It was in that moment I knew the adventure that would define my teenage life and change the fate of the world forever was just beginning. This is my story. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddy Season 2, still not a BDSM podcast. Don't say still because it makes it sound like eventually it will. <laughs> <laughs> not yet a BDSM Not yet. Hang yeah. in there, everyone. <laughs> Edging is the act of... <laughs> this podcast tells the story of four teens searching for their lost dads in a world forever changed. By the metaverse. Forever twisted by the metaverse. That's right. We're going to change it up every time, Will. Every That's time it's going to be a new I like thing. That, you know? I disagree. I don't think it's fun to change it up. <laughs> this intro forever changed by Beth Naysay. <laughs> Beth Fierce. Beth Nay. Say, yeah, that's pretty good. My name is Freddie Wong. I play Taylor Swift, an anime loving teen. Codename Ranger. <laughs> you see what I did there? Oh, nice. Rad fact this week about Taylor Swift Taylor Swift is able to start a fire anywhere, any condition, any place on earth. Assuming he has a butane lighter and a lot of tinder and somewhat dry conditions, actually. Is okay. Important. I like how you need a tinder. <laughs> the lighter already does it. The fire happens. What? <laughs> Matt. 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 You've made fire. Matt. When yeah, someone the second you said... pulled the trigger on a butane lighter. <laughs> you did fire. That's correct. you made fire. You did it. <laughs> the fire's done. <laughs> Didn't do that second part. You so if I went camping with Matt and I said, hey, Matt, can you make the fire? And he turned on his butane light. I went, mm, done. <laughs> did it. Did it. <laughs> Gather around, everyone. Time to for the s'mores. Time. Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew Arnold. I play school at home soccer kid, uh, Lincoln Lee Wilson. Like most awkward teens, I'm just going to keep this really simple and not expose too much of myself <laughs> at the nice. beginning here. Lincoln likes trains. So he just really he likes trains. Just, uh, just All right. Nice. Yeah. It's That's like, fair. Yeah, airplanes but safer. They're on the ground. Airplanes but well. and I think he might understand an elevator. If somebody explains to him that it's essentially a train but vertical. So maybe that will help him later down. That this was adventure. the sequel to Vertical Limit. Was Vertical Train? <laughs> Damn. That's it. Hey everyone, I'm Will Campos. I play Normal Oak, a perky, chirpy, chipper, cheery school spirit mascot kid slash cleric or codename cleric. I don't know what we're doing with that yet. This week's rad fact about Normal Oak. High school kids can be pretty snobby about the types of music they listen to. Normal is a fan of all genres of music across space and time, top 40 country pop hits, hip hop, as long as it is the marching band cover version. Oh, oh my, God. my God. Normal oh. listens Get exclusively no. to school marching Fuck. band albums that they like release to like fund the marching band for that year. And so like he loves a good marching band cover. I actually, I, I get, get that. I, get I could it. watch those compilations on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, this is also a will fact. This is how I get in method for normal is I blast marching band music on the way over here. Really? Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh there's some God. bangers. And there's always songs you don't think are going to rip ass as a marching band cover. <laughs> Sweet Caroline, great marching band song. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Hi, my name's Beth May, and I play Scary Marlo, oh. a goth punk seeker of darkness who was not like the other warlocks. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. That was real diegetic of you, the way yeah. you said that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Fun rad fact about Scary Jr. is that her guidance counselor, when she was uh, having so much trouble meeting her mom's new beau and him uh, coming into the family and stuff like that, suggested that Scary write letters to Terry, her stepdad. And so far, 
all she's done is left like passive aggressive post-it notes around the house about how he keeps washing her black clothes and making them like faded and then how he threw away a couple of safety pins that she was using as earrings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your dad. Our dads are gone. Yeah, your dads are gone until I'm your interim dad. I'm your regency dad. Your Aww. regent dad. I still have another dad. Fuck you. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. I'm three of your dads. The other two dads you didn't even know was there. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with this all being said in high school is that my rad facts probably should be about me in high school. And I was not a cool guy in high school. So. I refuse to believe that, Anthony. Refuse. Birch. Also, Anthony, do you know what the people want? If you were a cool guy in high school, there's nothing I'd want to know about you. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> like, don't talk. Yeah. I founded my school's film club in high school. That's pretty We real stayed quick. after school and watched movies. Fuck, we would have been friends. Fuck, yeah, we, we would have been, we, we been friends, dude. I would have been intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> Three of the four of us would have been friends with me. I liked movies in high school. No, no, no. Yeah, I, you, you misunderstand. I would have fallen in love with you immediately and then completely Aww. pushed you away because I didn't know how to deal with that and I wouldn't have never talked to you ever again. Oh, we're so blessed to have met now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So when we last left you, you were on, I guess, your first mission as agents of uh, the organization known as Daddies, the department for the, I don't care. It doesn't matter. And <laughs> come on, give you, it to us one more time. One more time. Job. Dad, one more time. The department for the Acquisition, Destruction, Deployment, and Investigation of Extra Normal Stuff, Daddies for cool. sure. And you had felt a surge of daddy magic that directed you to an incursion by the forces of the doodler. And that incursion took place at the San Dimas Elementary School, where you saw basically a bunch of kindergartners being forced to get into a computerized machine thing for a creature that was running on a treadmill and it seemed like they were speed running to be the first person to get a million dollars quicker than anybody else who had speed run. As you entered this room, the doors slammed shut behind you and the creature running on the treadmill had turned to you and said speed running is life. So I have a question for the DM. When does Freddy's having the talk right yes, now? Yes, I think it does. And how is that any different than what he normally does. <laughs> yes. So because of last episode, Taylor had tried to lockpick a door in the dungeon. And when you fail to lockpick a door, you get a curse. And Taylor's curse is that he has to speak whatever is going on in his mind. It says, I must think out loud for the entirety of the next adventure. Here we are on the next adventure. I feel adventure. like that's really our curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a group curse. So um, I don't think Scary likes me very much. <laughs> the runner on the treadmill has just said speed running his life. As she says that, you see a gremlin come out from behind oh the machine, a little knee-high gremlin, and it's adjusting knobs and tightening screws, and the runner goes, Tinker, Tinker, we got we got four new people trying to get a high score. I think they want to jump the queue. What do you think? And the Tinker's like, I don't care. As long as they get inside and get a million dollars, that's what the doodle wants. That's what he shall get, or it shall get, they shall get. Whoa. Oh, we're not here to cut into any lines. We're actually here to, you know what you want to tell them that we're going to stop Normal's already put on the invisibility oh. ring I got oh. last yeah. time. So <laughs> Okay, everything goes black. You can't see shit. Last episode, I got a ring that makes me invisible, but also blind. So yes, normal has vanished. Oh, oh, what did you do? Where? What did you do with normal? Lincoln, Where? relax. It's me, normal. <gasps> I'm right here behind you. I've got ah. this ring on. It makes me invisible. He's put on an invisibility ring. No, no, no. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, roll stealth with disadvantage, uh, Will. That's a five. Your five does not cut it. And the runner extends an arm out in the direction of your voice. And this shouldn't be that gross. Yes, it should. Whatever it is, it should be that gross. Okay, well, then one of her veins just out of her wrist and just snakes towards you. And you can feel it, like, caressing your head and your face. And she goes, I know you're there. I know you're there. I know you're there. Uh, 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 no, thank you. That's gross. Um, you can't it hide from me. <laughs> this is not a stealth only run. This is an any percent million dollars. Who wants to go first or together? Cooperative play is also encouraged, whatever you like. I have uh. some questions. Uh, I take the ring off. <laughs> Whoa. No, nah, I'm just kidding. You can see her vein floating in front oh, of you. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, they, uh, Stroking what, your head. What, what? Can you not? Like, we... Don't do this. Where, this. Come on, this is jacked up. Like, this isn't okay. Like, you got a bunch of kids here. What, what the hell's hey, going did on? did you guys say something about the doodler? The tinker looks at you and goes, yes, yes, the doodler. He or it or they who we do it all for. Yes, of course, the doodler. Are you also acolytes of he, they, it? We should play it cool here. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Roll persuasion <laughs> with disadvantage. <laughs> 14 and a three. The digger goes, no, no, no. I don't. I would smell it on you if you were truly acolytes. No, Damn, no, no. my bluff didn't work. Well, then what are you doing? We hear that you're killing kindergartners. 
both the tinker and the runner gasp. And they're killing. No, 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 no. We're teaching them. We're teaching them what all kids need to know. They need to move fast. They need to move quick. And they need to get paid. And we are teaching them and getting them ready for the world in which they are about to grow into. We're just doing it a little bit faster. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Aren't they dying at the end, though? They're finishing their runs. That's all. Are you official teacher? Do you have, like, accreditation or... <laughs> Anything? The runner says, of course, of course, look. And she points at a framed picture on the wall. And you see a typical class photo that you might see in a kindergarten classroom of a woman and a bunch of kids. And that woman in the picture looks a lot like the woman running on the treadmill, except human. Less veiny. Less veiny, more human, less wild eyes, less passion in her in her face. If I asked, like, my therapist to, like... Fix this? Would she come fix it? Yeah, like, well, like, the accreditation. And they just showed a picture of him with his other patients. I would be like, oh, yeah. I don't believe you. You think I got a job teaching at a kindergarten and they didn't check my bona fides? I mean, yeah. That's me in my class. Does she look like she's enjoying this? Like she's a <laughs> she's a part of this? Like, or is she like she looks like a, she's being controlled? A dedicated. So here's the thing about Lovecraftian shit, and this is gonna come up here a lot. The premise of like someone is so obsessed with this elder god or someone is so obsessed with this idea of chaos and stuff that they've been driven insane by it. Like that's inherently kind of problematic and that sucks. And I'm sorry. But what? Anthony, we literally watched an entire group of people like kill each other for Szechuan sauce because we're such big fans <laughs> of, <laughs> of, Rick of, and a, Morty, of a cartoon. Dude. So I think we can understand <laughs> what it means to be driven, <laughs> driven. beyond reasonable yes. human so bounds. So, okay, so, so what we'll do from now on is instead of saying that somebody's insane with passion or whatever, we'll just say they've got the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so this woman, this teacher, okay. clearly used to be normal, had a normal group of kids, and then at some point she got the sauce she real the sauce. bad. Okay. Well, scary. Maybe you, you're tough. Tell them. Tell them what's up. You're the boss, remember? So yeah, go yeah. ahead and sort of I, represent the group here. And one, we get never, us out of this. we never ever agreed on that. I'm kind of anti-authority. Yeah, I don't know if you could boss. tell, but I'm just like <laughs> not somebody that you want in charge because I'm a little too radical. I thought cool. if you were like anti-authority, that meant that you didn't want anyone else to be in charge. Well, that too. I don't think Scary's very good at all. I would be a better boss. Why am I? S Everything that's coming through my head is coming through my mouth. Yeah, that's this is really of... kind of annoying. Yeah. Oh my god, boobs. Ah. Whoa. Wait. Don't think about. Ah. Wait. Ah. It's weird that he said that when he was looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I gag myself in order to make sure that I don't say anything. Anyways, okay. All right. All right. Thinking, thinking, um, but not thinking out loud like Taylor. Your badges vibrate, uh, and you get yeah. a call from Agent May Hales, who says, "Like, hey, are you on? Are you on site? What's going on?" Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're on site. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're here. There's like a vain lady. I think she's a teacher. She's trying to make these kids like play a fucked up video game where they turn really old and like. So what do we do? Did we just, I don't want them to die. We like, yeah, did we just tell them to not do it. What do we do? <laughs> well, okay. So if they're innocent kids around first order businesses, ideally try to get the kids out alive and the current ooh, age ooh. that they were when they came into school. Ooh, ooh. Guys, let's just pull the fire alarm. I go and pull the fire alarm. Roll, I guess, dexterity to see if you can do that before the runner notices. How many kids are normal and how many are old? <laughs> <laughs> there are five 80-year-old looking ass kids and there are 10 normal kids lined up for the machine. Okay, and there's one kid on the machine? There's one kid in the machine who just got out of the machine and they're about to load another kid into the machine, but they haven't started it up yet. Okay, so I've pulled the fire alarm with a ha <laughs> motherfucker 20, natural 20 plus one, 21. Oh, wow, okay. So you pull the fire alarm, a really loud alarm plays, as fire alarms do. Come on, let's go, let's go, it's a fire alarm, you gotta get outside. So the kids, almost by muscle memory, sort of stand up and do the thing where they all line up and they all get ready by to walk height, outside. Or alphabetically, I don't remember by which height. one. <laughs> so if it's all about how you can just look down the line from the front and you can see all of them. Because that way the okay. tall kids don't block the kids behind them. Okay. Damn, Freddie, you should be a teacher. That's not bad. But anyway, the kids all line up, and the runner is like, y'all lined up and nowhere to go. Go ahead and try that door, ding dong. Oh, shit, that's right. I think we're locked in. Normal tries to open the door. It is locked. This is a fire code violation, and you should know that fire alarms call the fire department. The brave heroes of the San Dimas Fire Department are going to be here any minute now, and they're going to stop you from 15 to 20 minute response time. The worst in the nation. Upon hearing that, it'll be 20 minutes until the fire department gets here. Why would you add... That the fire department of San Dimas is so bad. It's not my fault that we're underfunding our fire department. I don't know why Link is charping my nards for it. I had to sell candy bars for the dump fire department. <laughs> Sorry, what? Yeah, like the baseball team. We were sponsored, but then they made us sell candy bars, which makes me wonder why we were sponsored. Anyway, that's why I don't play baseball anymore. So the runner raises both of her hands, and she goes, 
oh, 20 minutes in this world, perhaps, but once you're in the simulation, 20 minutes can feel like an absolutely infinite amount of time. And pop, pop, pop each of the veins from her hand pop out of her skin, mm, and God. all six of these veins start snaking towards you, seemingly intent on grabbing you. Freddy here, sir. Any tempered glass on the mission. <laughs> it's just made out of complete like any, tempered glass. Like anywhere. What makes glass tempered? Anthony, I'll tell you 100%. Absolutely not. There's no okay. tempered glass <laughs> on a workout type machine. I thought it was like a computer or something. Imagine the fucking phone booth with a bunch of wires and shit coming out of it and a monitor on the front of it and a bunch of blinking lights. And that's what the tinker, the little gremlin is futzing with. And all those lights and everything are plugged into the uh, treadmill. The Peloton. Guys, step one. I think we got to fuck up that machine. And then we got to fuck up the teacher. So normal just takes a running charge at the machine to knock it over. Uh, Lincoln's going to take a running charge at the teacher the moment the tentacles. I'll let my minions out. do the work. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like uh, we should actually be uh, <gasps> rolling initiative. Initiative. <laughs> Initiative rolls. 18 plus 1, 19. Uh, 20 for initiative. Jeez, Louise. Jeez. Whoa. Uh, 18. Whoa. I got a 1 plus 2, 3. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that makes sense. Gary's like chilling. I'm chilling, bro. Okay, so normal, you get to go first as you see these tendrils coming at you. Okay, I would like to take a running charge at this machine, this gizmo that they've been jacking people into and just kind of tip it over and break it. Go ahead and give me a strength check. I got a 3. Okay. Your back hurts. You lift it with your back, not with your legs. Oh, oh, wow. oh. Rookie shit. Should have stretched. Oh, oh, that's bad. The little tinker is at your knees going, hee, 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 and is just like slapping your shins. It's not doing any damage. It's just uh, humiliating you, and it's going like, weak boy, weak boy, can't lift the thing. Taylor, your turn. Like, hey, that's our school mascot, and I'm going to just fucking <laughs> bunt this little guy as hard as I can. Just a kick. Just okay. a real running kick. Go ahead and make a dexterity roll to see if you And I am aiming for... It. Right between hey, the, is the goblin's head made out of tempered glass. <laughs> <laughs> Dexterity roll. Ooh, 13 plus 1, 14. No matter what you were going to do damage to it, so go ahead and roll whatever your unarmed strike damage is. Unarmed strike damage. It's just two. I don't even roll anything. It's just two. <laughs> Great. You do two damage to the tinker. <laughs> It gets launched across the room and hits the opposite wall and slides down like yeah, and falls down to the ground, but it is no longer near the machine. You okay, Norm? Oh, no, I gotta walk this off. Oh, I should have stretched. I should have stretched. Oh. Link, it is your turn. Link's gonna grab what I'm sure there's probably a globe somewhere in this classroom, as there are. Yeah. And so he's gonna grab the globe and then kick it like a soccer ball at her face. That'll work. So you'll hit her in the face with it and that'll do whatever your damage, what's your damage supposed to be for this? Two. <laughs> okay, Yeah, great. but globe though. If it's one of the Texture globes where the Himalayas are like bumpy. So it'd be a 2.000001 damage <laughs> to the fucking run. Are you saying it's got like spiky mountains on it or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some tectonic place of shift. It might be spiky, dude. We should do like a random country generator to see what country she gets. Uh, hit yes, in the face yeah, with. yeah. And if it's a mountainous country, it does one extra random damage. Random country, explore the world. Yemen. Not a lot of mountains in Yemen, I don't think. No, wait. Is there? Yemen, Yemen mountains. Is Yemen mountainous. The yeah, Sarawak the Sarawak Mountains. Mountains. Mountains are in Yemen. They're, they're 9,800 feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big. It's not that big. Also, like, what you'd want to hit her is, like, the metal part of the globe. <laughs> yeah. The globe. yeah, you, you want, guys know you'd want either like the North Pole floating there. or the South Pole, guys. Like, I don't know what we're thinking about <laughs> mountain ranges like idiots. Oh, boy, who came up with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're acting like the Braille lettering on the, like, <laughs> <laughs> the countries are going to kill somebody. <laughs> so you do a whopping two damage. The goal is, like, whip her head back or, like, daze her or anything. Oh, uh, if that's the case, then go ahead and give me a dexterity mm -hmm. roll so we won't do any damage. We'll yeah. see if you can, like... Does it help that, that the right? Arabian Leopard was reported seen in <laughs> oh, yeah, so it does. You get advantage. Of Yemen. <laughs> yeah, you get advantage. I'm trying to like daze her because she's like sending tentacles at me. Okay. I mean, everybody, but. What'd you get? It sounds like a natural one. Sounds like a bad roll, Matt. Looking at your face looks like a bad roll. It's a four. Yeah. Okay. But my dexterity is a plus three. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, still nothing. It's so, a yeah. one. It was a one. It's what it was. <laughs> oh, oh, that's one, 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 one. Okay, so you fall flat on your ass. You completely fail to kick the thing. Your dreams of potentially being on the soccer team <laughs> are quickly uh, running away from you. You fall straight onto your back. You take a D4 of damage. The globe lands in front of me, and I see Honolulu, and I'm like, I wish I was back in Hawaii on vacation with my dads. <laughs> 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 my foot hurts. <laughs> It is now the runner's turn. So the runner is going to extend her veiny tentacles and try to grab each of you because she is not distracted and can reach all four of you. So everybody give me a dexterity saving throw. Six plus three, nine. I got a natural 20. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I got a 10. I mean, I'm on the ground. That makes sense. I also had a 10. Everybody except for normal. 
the tentacles encircle you and grab you and constrict you tight. I would like to say that because I got a natural 20, Normal's doubled over with back pain, and then, like, he felt the slither of the tentacle, and it freaked him out, so he jolted straight up, and it, like, fixed my back. <laughs> <laughs> like, you self chiropractic like, oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> All three of you, not Normal, are grappled, which means that your speed is zero. You can't benefit from any bonus to your speed, so you can't move. And that you're all grappled, the runner is going to go, and now it's time for a trio's race to get to a million dollars. Check it out, everybody. Watch this, watch this. And then you start getting pulled over to the machine, which sort of unfurls its walls sort of fold down and welcome you. And three bright lights appear in the center of this unfolded machine, uh, and you can feel it beckoning to you. So next turn, if you are not released from her grapple, you will be thrust forcibly into this simulation. Dude, this sucks. This reminds uh, me of something. I really shouldn't be talking about the ones that reminds me of that. Uh, scary. The ones characters are constricted. I don't like this. I should talk about that. Scary, it is your turn. I'm going to cast Unseen Servant. Ooh. This spice. spell creates an invisible, mindless, shapeless medium force that performs simple tasks at your command until the spell ends. The servant springs into existence in an unoccupied space on the ground within range as AC 10, uh, one hit point, and it can't attack. And okay. then if it drops to zero hit points, the spell ends. Once on each of your turns as a bonus action, you can mentally command the servant to move up to 15 feet and interact with an object. The servant can perform simple tasks that a human servant could do, such as fetching things, cleaning, mending, lighting fires, serving food, and pouring wine. I feel like there's just a Goodness. kid at the school that fucking has a crush on, <laughs> on you that just like follows Bone. you around everywhere and you just get to boss him around. I cast friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> I pull into the nether realm of friendship and I pull him out and have him do my bidding. <laughs> And he thinks I'm a bitch. <laughs> it's going to be like, yeah, like a cool, like animal. Iguana. Sure. It's an iguana. Definitely. <laughs> and it's like goth and its name is goth. And, um, <laughs> and, but it can um, do human stuff. So it's like a humanoid iguana. It's G -E -O -T -H. I mean, it can do human stuff, but it's just an iguana. <laughs> and it's going to <laughs> like. Not that anymore. That makes as much sense as a child that just followed us this whole time here. I mean, it's not like he follows you the whole time. He's, he's appearing out of nothing. I'm just saying. And it is going to light the machine on fire. <laughs> I tried to help you bail out. I tried to help you bail out. I tried to help you. No, it doesn't. Why? But it said it could. No, it didn't. It it's... said like things like light fires. And yeah, I think yeah, that it you could... presumes that there are like things around for it to light a fire. It can't. Can a human being with no tools whatsoever just go to and go fire? Yes, with a butane about... lighter. Yes. He doesn't have a butane lighter. I got a butane lighter in my go bag. I'm going to see if I can get the lighter to goth. You already spent an action to cast this thing. But she gets a bonus, bonus action, action to tell him what to do. Okay, but you could use a bonus action to tell him to go get the lighter. Yeah, that's what I'll do. You know what? Well, here's what I'll do. <laughs> I will let you roll persuasion or intimidation, any social thing. And if you roll well enough, then you'll instruct him to both get the lighter and then do something with the lighter. So okay. you're a nice pet owner or an abusive pet owner? It's all going to depend on what I have more in. Okay, they're both the same. Both a plus one. Roll them bones. Come on, You're trying man. to beat a 15. I love Gothi Iguana. Damn, <laughs> 14. Oh. Plus one, right? Plus one. I, I got a 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> D and D in a nutshell. Yeah. I, I said you have to beat a 15, but you were so happy that I'll just give it to you. I, I can't it, take that away God. from you. What you didn't see is me, like, literally, like, tripping over my own hand somehow where I, like, dropped the dice before I could roll it. And I was upset <laughs> with myself, and I was like, oh, 14. So, yeah, it was actually a really inspiring moment. I, yeah, then I'll, I'll okay. give it to you. So I'm like, hey, Goth. And it goes, yes, my love. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use my. Wait, did one... it talk out loud? I just want I, for the world, but I need to know. Yeah, it talked out loud. <laughs> okay, it, it, it's, it's iguana sized, but it does talk out loud, and it has the strength and abilities of a human, including speech. Lincoln's Anthony, can I out. also ask the iguana to not call me love, or is that another bonus action? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can do that one for free. That one's free. Hey, Goth, okay, I need you to get the lighter out of Taylor's go bag and then, like, light the machine thing on fire and then, like, try to prevent anybody from putting the fire out. Also, <laughs> <laughs> if you can't, just, just give him the scary iguana goth look. You know the one. <laughs> so he goes...
I can do the first two of those things. I will do them right Hell now. Yeah. So he's gonna That's be what the- made me almost maybe fall in love with you someday. Keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> His, you see his pupils dilate hugely. He goes, I just gotta wear it down. I just gotta wear it down. <laughs> so Goth the, Goth the friend zone iguana uh, crawls over to. Poor uh, iguana's not gonna sleep all night. <laughs> crawls over to the go bag that Taylor dropped and he's gonna search it for the lighter. He finds it in the front pocket. He finds the butane lighter and puts it in his mouth. And like pauses for a moment to look at Scary like, huh? look, I did it, I did it. Are you, do you like me yet? <laughs> and then he's going to walk back. I feel like he's got enough movement to do both of these. Fuck it. And he's got fast motherfuckers. Dude. Yeah. And he's going to raise one of his sticky fingers and try to. <laughs> Taylor said that out loud. <laughs> yeah, that was Taylor. That was Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's thinking. Like, because Taylor's seeing it happen in front of him, you know? <laughs> like, it's one of those things where the camera is like on the iguana and like moving with the iguana and you're just in the background. You're just like, yeah, wow, yeah. what a fast wow, motherfucker. Look at this What's girl. great about this is that I'm like literally staring at D&D Beyond, which why would I ever? But um, like it says an invisible, mindless, shapeless force. And the- yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that, so it's, and the it's perfect, like that, but <laughs> the opposite of all of those yeah. things. <laughs> but I like to think that like yearning is that a mindless, invisible, shapeless Love force yeah, that no. is Dang. friend zone. I was gonna make fun for you, but iguanas do go twenty one miles per hour. And then I Googled average teen speed, and that's a total of 14 miles per hour. So the guanas are faster than us. We clocked the teen boy at 35 <laughs> miles an hour. The average teen. <laughs> Say it again. We have a we teen have boy. A teen. <laughs> so if we're 30 feet, they're like 25. Yeah, they get like 40 feet. Don't move. The teen's vision is based on movement. <laughs> Careful, that iguana is twice as fast as, as a teen. teen. <laughs> so Goth, with the butane lighter in its mouth, crawls back to the machine, which doesn't have the tinker protecting it. So it's going to, with its iguana mouth and iguana hand, sticky iguana hand, going to try to activate this butane lighter. Ooh, we got a 19. Oh my Ooh, god. So my god. this fucking iguana smokes weed, <laughs> and you can't tell me otherwise. You tell me he knows how the fucking butane lighter works right from the jump? This is a weed smoking iguana, dude. Best character. How did character. this iguana become the most three-dimensional character in our I fucking know. campaign so Best far. character was hiding an iguana. And it's a weed smoking iguana. No, it's a magical iguana. It wasn't. It wasn't around the whole time, was it? Wait, or was it? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh no, it just showed up now. I mean, yeah, you all have magic. Yeah, she it's summoned like, the iguana. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to like contextualize your magic as things you've always done. You just Ugh. have daddy. It's magic. It's her now. OC, dude. Oh, we got daddy magic. All makes sense. The iguana expertly flicks the butane lighter on and starts to burn through one of the wires leading from the machine to the treadmill. By the end of its next turn, if nothing is done to it, it will successfully burn through. Let's say there are four wires that need to be burned through in order to actively disable this machine. At the end of its next turn, it'll successfully burn through one of those. Normal, it is your turn. Are the wires plugged into anything? The wires go from the treadmill to the machine. I go up to the treadmill and I, I want to bash it so that the speed goes way up so she goes flying off of it. Okay, like the controls? You want to hit yeah, the controls? Yeah, like is this like a Nordic track or whatever? Yeah, Nordic track did have that thing where it made people old a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that in the TV app. Yeah. So uh, as you look at the controls for this thing, it initially looks like a Nordic track, but then you start to sort of see like the letters Nordic are track sort of... comes back in a big way in the mm-hmm. 2040s. It's the new Peloton. The letters are sort of morphing in front of your eyes and don't quite make a lot of sense. It's like when you're in a dream and you look so at when you're trying clock. to make an Ikea cabinet, am I right? Oh my God. <laughs> but the numbers are changing and the letters are changing in front of you and it's beginning to make you nauseous just to look at it. Does it have them. the magnet thing that you pull just to stop it? No, it doesn't. Damn. Damn, Damn. dude. That's so a safety real. feature that all treadmills need to have. Uh, this is Yo, obviously a magic word. Hold up. I can read in dreams. Is that normal? We don't actually need to answer that. He's just saying you his just, thoughts yeah. out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, that was Taylor thinking his thoughts out loud. Not Freddie wondering about something about his I've own. never read in a dream. That's wild. I have tried to read in dreams, but I can't. At any rate, normal starts mashing buttons that, on the panel. Go ahead and roll. I guess this is just luck. Roll, just roll cross country mode. So I rolled a 19, which means I hit whatever the second best button is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you wanted to make it go faster, you said? Yeah, I wanted to like make it go so fast that she go flying off of it. You managed to hit the like faster button on it. I'm going to have her roll to see if she can keep up. So she got a six. So it's beginning to go too fast for her, and oh, she baby. stumbles a little bit, and her knee <laughs> hits the treadmill tread, and it skins some of her knee like oh, real bad, God. like oh, too, like more than it should. I'm not going to describe too much, but more than it should. Damn. And she takes a D8 of damage. So I'm gonna roll a D8 for her. So it took a lot of damage. God. She's jumping on one leg now. Like Hell it just yeah. takes her leg clean off. What? Oh my God. And she's, Did your yes. leg off? Yes. I rolled a D8 and basically what I'm doing is like, oh, I wanted to balance this to be like a normal D&D combat, but for four level one characters. And I put that in a Kobold Fight Club and it gave me an imp. 
and an imp has 10 HP. And I said, yeah, sure. Stumbling on this thing causes her to lose a D8 of damage. She took seven damage. So she has less than a half of her health left from this Ooh. one fuck up. So yeah, she stumbles, her knee goes down, hits the treadmill tread, and it whoosh, just like just with one big pull, yanks her entire right leg off. And now she's jumping oh one leg So does it look like thing. she's like deteriorated like her like body's weak or like yeah it takes it off way too easily okay. yeah like, that's what like, i was trying okay okay yes she is emaciated oh, but, but people who are on the sauce have a sort of like <laughs> their eyes are sunken a little bit their wild eye looks their like their eyes look like little squiggles oh my god no <laughs> they burp a lot no. they constantly have a little bit of no. like juice on their lip do you think our dads are gonna be proud of us if we like kill a teacher <laughs> yeah, probably not. No. Normal's kind of freaking out. This was way gorier and rowdier than he thought. He thought this was going to be like a fun comedy thing. And he was like, oh, no, no. Oh, God, no. Taylor, it is your turn. As a ranger and as a tiefling ranger, I was thinking, you know, as far as like races go, having a half demon sort of thing is kind of cool. Thaumaturgy has some interesting effects. Are there any unlocked anythings in this room? Unlocked anything. Because I can cause an unlocked door or window to fly open. There's like the cubby with all the nap mats in oh, it. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all those mats are stacked up in there. If you pop that door open, maybe those mats will fall out. You could also, if you wanted to, hold your turn until something happens. Like if you think Link or Scary will be able to get you out of this situation, then you can say, well, I hold struggle. my turn until they let me, do Let me struggle and pull my everyday carry pocket knife which keeps i keep in my pocket and my mom didn't frisk me <laughs> whatever <laughs> dick go ahead Wait, roll, I, roll I said roll, i'm a prepper what if you got a belt knife roll dexterity oh yeah yeah i got a cool belt knife where i grab no he would have your mom would have seen that and taken that from you I, grab I, well, I grab my sword cane and <laughs> <laughs> so you i believe i believe what that you have odds, a flick knife what are the odds of a teenage boy having a cane and there's not a sword in it if you saw him on his street I, uh, with a cane, like, there's a sword in that I cane a, i know I a cane sword wait, 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 i appreciate an entire scene happening last episode where we go through your mom making sure you have no weapon <laughs> that's the whole point of the scene <laughs> and then you go like but i had it in my pocket I had it. oh yeah but what I do you think it. edc stands for bro everyday carry you don't put it in your <laughs> yeah, bag it, which means if you carried it every day your mom would probably know about that and i like have you bro. not carry it with you bro the amount of things that your yeah. mom roll dexterity know. see if you can get your everyday carry knife out of your pocket also i owned a cane sword in high school <laughs> dude that's hey, fucking and not like a cool like haha i'm a victorian man like a zadoichi cane sword do you want to know why i absolutely know i would have been friends with anthony it's Anthony, motherfucker, I own the cane sword too, Fuck baby. Yeah, baby. And I kept it in the top drawer of my bedroom. Fuck that yeah. doesn't mean you guys would have been friends. That means you guys would have been mortal enemies. Yeah. One or the other. One or the other, guaranteed. I'm I know, sure I know, I would have been friends with neither of you because I had a staff that I carved myself and then carved elvish words into. No, it. no, Whoa. no. You would have definitely been friends with me because my friend Yuli currently owns a staff that's got his name carved into it in Elvish, and we were friends in high school. Shit, so he sounds shit. cool as hell. He's, he is cool as hell. 18 plus 1, 19. You piece of shit. All right, you get the everyday carry knife out of your pocket. All of my preparations finally beginning to My preparation, off. putting a knife in my pocket. Well, yeah. All right, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to try and like use it to you know wiggle my way out. Give me a strength check to see if you can slash through these vines. Got it. So those are fucking cheap ass. Cheap ass. Oh, yeah. Pocket knives are horrible. Yeah, you're a kid. Six plus one, seven. So yeah, you hack at the veins, but it's just chipping into the veins. It's not doing any real Your damage. Your efforts I had my Hans are steel. in vain, one might say. <laughs> one might say it. Link, it's your turn. Can I first do a history check? Before okay. I don't know that kind of action. I want to know if like I know this teacher. Okay, yeah. Because go ahead like, and roll you know, history. I'm a librarian and I feel like fellow parents and, and whatnot. Yeah, so go like, ahead and roll history. And if you do well, then you get to determine what that history 16, is. Sixteen, but my history is plus four, so that's a twenty. She's the least. Okay, so Whoa. yeah, wh what do you want your history to be? So what's the teacher's name? This teacher's name is Mrs. Nerfley. That was given to us by Paige Havener. Thank you, Paige. That's a very good name. Good name. Her full name is Sponge Nerfley. Sponge Nerfley. <laughs> Mrs. Nerfley. Mrs. Nerfley. Okay, then I'm going to talk to Mrs. Nerfley. Wait, Mrs. Mrs. Nerfley, what what are you doing? This is hey, it's it's Lincoln. You you know me. You know my my father Grant. He's the librarian. Remember. You were writing all those Bernstein Bears books, and like we, we, we talked about how they were like really old fashioned and like kind of boring morals, and like really old fat, and like we turned you on to the bluey stuff, the bluey books, and like you loved them. And like, you, you, come on, what are you doing? Okay, roll persuasion. What would Bluey, the Australian cattle dog, do? Oh you my have god, fun. that's how I live right now, Will. Yeah, like, why are a bunch of adults watching Bluey? Because it's I, good. I've got a nephew. Good shit, this is Lincoln bro. talking. It's good. Okay, 12. Plus zero. So she says, 
it's pronounced Berenstain. And her eyes uh, get bigger and uh, bloodshot. No, that was after their sun shifted and went back to steam. It went back to steam. <laughs> you know what, you're right. She goes, good pronunciation. No, fuck you. You don't understand. The things they've taught you in school, everything that you've learned, it's all lies. And none of it fucking matters. What matters is this. And she points at the treadmill and she points at the kids and she points all around her. This. The stuff we're doing right now. Is, is there a way to like find out mayhaps a role if you will and, <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> is there a way to find out like you're, if, you're if this person like can be like saved i suppose you could try to like if you had her restrained you could do like an arcana check because it seems like whatever's gotten to her is magical in some way mm. you could probably be able to tell like Kennedy's and Link probably not. knows that that's not her normally, right? Because he knows. Her. Yeah, yeah. You saw That'd Mrs. Nerf. Wild when she if she was... had her job like this entire time. And she <laughs> yeah. was just like I always. Can, I'll, like... I'll tell her. I'll be like, guys, like this is like like I just saw her like a couple days ago. She's a really nice lady. This isn't her. This is. Yeah, that that checks out. Well, no, I don't know these other two people. These other two, this this goblin person and this, this other adult. They're they're horrible. Kick the goblin. I'm gonna kick her. Okay, so that was your whole turn, Link. Yeah. <laughs> it is now Mrs. Nerfley's turn. She puts the three of you into the machine. Instantly, you feel like fucking Akira. The wires from the machine slink up and they like plug themselves into your arms and back your neck and into your, your eyes. Instantly, the three of you are teleported to the womb. You're all what? separately in your own parallel simulations. And you hear Mrs. Nerfley from outside the amniotic fluid from outside this universe saying like, Okay, so the thing about this particular part of the speedruns is kind of boring. It's kind of an unskippable cutscene. So I modded it a little bit. So we're just going to skip right to the part where they can at least start talking. So oh, here oh, we go. It's so comfortable in here. Though. And then, yeah, <laughs> it's like, all that comfort, all that safety. You exit your wound. No! No! <laughs> Taylor for strength a... check. <laughs> strength check. I can't <laughs> say <laughs> Yeah, strength check to see if you can stay in the womb. Got six. Yeah, now they pull you out. Dang, I'll just become a podcaster when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, as it fast forwards, give me a perception check. Perception. Oh, shit. Because Taylor's got like a demon one. Five. <laughs> Five. Ooh, darn. You see two forms, two <laughs> male forms that you have never seen before. And you're, well, you don't see your mom. You're coming out of your mom, but two men. And coming out of my mom, and I've been <laughs> feeling just, just fine. <laughs> 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 You're all suddenly infants. This is our life. This is your life. With normal C. Yeah, normal C is three people hooked into the machine, their eyes closed, and they're like kind of convulsing as a bunch of sensation goes through their body. You're basically getting plugged into like a mini matrix. So the three of you as infants are together in a little play date while your parents are all hanging out and talking. Amongst all the parents that you've maybe recognized from a distance at school or, or whatnot, you also see a very handsome man in a what seems to be a suit he's in a really nice suit and he's talking to somebody that seems to be like not a lot but like a little bit on fire and not too bothered by it and they're talking to your mom do i see grandma or do i see my biological parents oh gosh i forgot you're adopted yeah. actually why don't you roll perception link i mean there's a lot going on so that's a four plus two that's a six okay so you see something bathed in darkness when you exit the womb a non-space where you think your dad might be and then there's a big blank spot in your memory and then the next thing you know, you're playing with this group of people and you see Marco and Grant, okay. the real fathers. In this moment, you hear Miss Nerfley say, all right, let's start the timer. And all of you see in your vision, in like the upper right-hand corner of your vision, a timer start counting up from zero. And then you see on the bottom right corner of your vision, a dollar sign and then nine zeros. So she goes, okay, let's see if they can get out of here faster than the previous best score for getting to a million dollars. I'm putting it on the line. I'm saying everybody gets to go back to the original age. I'm doing it. I believe in these kids. I think I could do it. The best time we had prior to this, the current WR, is 32 years. Two months, three days, 12 hours, 34 seconds. So if you can get to a million dollars, any of you, before then. I buy $4 of Dogecoin right <laughs> when it came out. How do you tell your parents to do that? Um... Uh... This is so good. Cool. You this. can also at any point fast forward to another part of your life where you're more capable of doing things. Wait, 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 I've already beat this. <laughs> oh no. This is just replaying our lives. If I just fast forward to the point where right before I get put into the machine, it's an infinite loop. Wait, why is yes. it looping though? Because oh, I at see. At some what point he's I'm gonna become a teen, and at some point this teen is gonna get put no. into this thing, and then we're going to inside so you're, there. And then in your memory, you're going to go into in another matrix within a matrix. You're going to go into the yeah, simulation. Yeah, but are we actually time traveling? Because if we're not no, time you're not traveling, actually time traveling. Work. But it, what he's saying still makes sense, though, because it's working off of his memories. It's basically, oh. you're, you're in a simulation that is built primarily off of your memory. So what Freddie, unfortunately, has correctly pointed out is that 
you'll keep going into the same simulation over and over and over again by the time you're a teen. You built in a time loop for us, man. I you did. Time I, did. Just... I did. I play the fucking Powerball every time because <laughs> I hit this loop infinitely. I play every combination of the fucking Mega Millions. I tell my mom, like, like the week before, I'll just fucking buy a scratch or whatever. I'll play the lottery over no. and over again until I win. <laughs> okay. okay. Is it actually a simulation of our actual life? Because then that would imply that we could never get older than... Than this no, it's that, a simulation of your life work. that you can diverge from in order to try and get a million dollars. All these other kids that you saw, they were not as smart as you. And so we're like, baby teens. Yeah, because like, they're, they're, they're babies. Fucking... So they're like, no, well, I guess I'll just try to like go to school. I'll focus on this other stuff and try to be a... a go uh, for school. They're going to <laughs> school. <laughs> they're trying to do STEM careers yeah, and shit. They didn't like, idiots. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, I absolutely just, I wait until I'm old enough. I know what stupid meme coin popped at some point and I buy when it was point zero 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 one. I buy a couple dollars of it. Well, I guess the question is how much money does it take to buy Dogecoin at its like cheapest? You research that while I talk about what well, happens. Well, because this is the Taylor. future, so I don't buy Dogecoin. I buy... Sure, you buy something else. I buy a daddy's coin because somebody makes a coin of our podcast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you buy a coin based on I, a podcast? I am going to make that daddy's coin. Going to... I'm going to make daddy's coin right now in this world. <laughs> okay. What I do is I do two loops. The first loop, I just remember some mega lottery winning thing at some point. Okay. And, and you know, just like you just some, memorize the number. Just memorize the number. And then the second loop, I buy the tickets for that or have my mom buy some tickets for that. Does Taylor have to relive every agonizing second of his life over and over and over again to do I'm this? I'm fast forwarding through that shit, bro. And also, my life rules. <laughs> oh. Like, I'm slowing down briefly to just re experience all the good parts. Yes, you know whenever saying? you fast forward, you're basically like, like the one time at your I body. scored one, like on the T ball game where I managed to connect with it once. <laughs> Like that moment, like, ooh, that's still good every time. Roll persuasion to see if you can persuade your mom to buy you, in the second loop, a lottery ticket. Mom, can you buy a lottery ticket? I know what numbers are winning. All right, roll. Five. No. Well, you're going to regret this. I'll just ask you next go around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How old are you when you ask this? The 40. age at which I can remember numbers and speak. So probably like somewhere in the range of five to six years old. Five to six. Okay. So that's 12 years you've already wasted. No, but you said I could fast forward it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like fast yeah, forwarding yeah. doesn't not turn the time No, no, that's right. fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So you're 12 years. Yeah. So go ahead and roll again. Yeah, baby. Nat 91. <laughs> All right. Um, you got to ask like on your birthday or something so yeah. you get advantage uh, on the roll. Yeah, that would have yeah, been yeah, good. That's a good but point. But alas, 18 years. So go ahead and try again if right, you want to. I'm going to do it on the birthday. All right. So on your 13th birthday, you want a Powerball with the exact numbers that you're going to specify. Yes. Wait, do all of us have to find a hack like this? No, you, no, no. You don't all have to. Uh, I got an 11. Listen, Beth May here just Googling list of biggest class action lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, so that failed. So you got 12 plus mom! 13. So and 25. also, by the way, each one of these times, the day after, my mom's like, why? I should have done it. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> Every single time. It. On the day of, she's like, I didn't do that because I didn't want to teach you that gambling also, is a way to victory. And, and also, then, like, it ruins our relationship. Could you imagine if your kid went up to you and gave you like the three hundred million dollar winning Powerball numbers in yeah. multiple realities? That would fuck you up. You'd be in therapy for that. Yeah, shit, she bro. spends the rest of her life and yours <gasps> resenting herself and being terrified of you. It's just a simulation. It's just a simulation. It's a simulation. It's fine. But you are feeling all this. Uh, so twenty five. One more of these loops, and you will have not beaten fuck. the original. I had such time. a foolproof fucking method. Yeah, you did. So right. you get one more roll of trying that if you want to try that, and then if that doesn't work, we'll go to the other two. Okay, persuasion. <laughs> Is this all happening like in the span of a second? Like, yes, what's from your perspective, what this is, is just normal? like happening. Okay, all right. <laughs> Fucking another natural one! <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? <laughs> can we loop right. back to the beginning of this podcast so that Freddie can take another question? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I literally was just 11s and 1s. I'm looking at my screen right now. It's persuasion check 11. Persuasion check 11. Persuasion check 1. It's just 1s on my fucking screen! <laughs> <laughs> and as your mother points out to you, that's why you don't gamble. Mom! Normal. As you are watching Taylor try to do this loop over and over and over again to get a million dollars, my brow you, so see him, you see furrowed. his, his brows furrowed, sweats pouring down him, and you see him instantly age 12 years. Oh. And then you see him instantly age another 12 years. Oh. And you instantly see him age another 12 years. So Taylor's timer <laughs> goes over 32 years. It's in a three-way split screen, and a big red X appears on Taylor's screen. And she goes, ooh, what a shame, what a shape. Taylor looked like he had a really good strat. There's some new strats that we hadn't seen before, but it turns out it just didn't quite work. It's bad RNG in that run. Sorry, sorry, Taylor. It's not but my fault my mom sucks. So let's look at Lincoln Scary. Uh, what, what's, what's going on there? So either of you, do you have any plans for how to make a million dollars before you turn 32? 
<laughs> yeah, I bought Ooh. Doge. So you bought Dogecoin. Oh, I bought an NFT. You should. What was it? Make it hey. funny. Um, Improvise something that's funny. <laughs> it was, and then put that into the gameplay. It was fart coin. Yeah, yeah. fart coin. And it got up to sixty nine dollars. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it only got up to sixty nine dollars. Yeah, on May twentieth, four twenty. Hashtag fuck yeah. May twentieth would be five twenty. It started, fucking idiot. And it started at <laughs> eight point zero 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 D dollars. So it looks like a dick. <laughs> When you spell it out, <laughs> and it was so Fun, funny this and going fucking to the wait moon. eight point zero 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 D dollars just eight dollars that's just eight dollars eight you equals D that's why it was confusing to people <laughs> this 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 stock's going all the way up to eight equals 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 equals, equals D tilde 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 tilde, 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 baby. tilde smiley tilde. face winky winky eggplant so I I, I bought that okay. At what age did you buy enough to make a million dollars? If it's um, going up from eight to sixty nine, yeah, how did you get the money to buy? How did you get the money to invest? What do you mean? What, what do you mean? Money? What you mean? Money? Yeah. That's all you don't have a fucking credit card? Yeah, that's part of the, the challenge of this. You don't get to act like this is the dumbest shit in the world, even though it is. <laughs> this, 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 you this, still have to this, strategize this, and roll for this it. This is like how do you buy something at the store? What do you mean? You, because you're a kid. Yeah, if you're going to invest enough in Fartcoin to make a million dollars, even if you know the okay, rate of so return, do, you have to okay. have enough money for as capital. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, all. My, Can somebody run the numbers on how much you'd have to invest if it went from $8 to $69? No, it didn't go from $8 to $69. It went from 0.00000008 to 69, which is like, it went from boom. No, you said eight. You start the balls, the balls D. start on the left if you're making no. a dick with a D. Like, and you know that. You know that. You can't try to take it away. It's not backwards D equals I equals I equals I eight. It's eight dollars. The whole plan was I invest like a dollar. If you invested like a hundred dollars in Dogecoin right when it started, you need fourteen thousand. 492 or okay. 15,000 coins, and that will be worth Well, then the plan's not there because the point was that All I right, would put $100. I've got, I've got a plan. Okay, normally you see Link aging up to 32 years as he tries to find a way to make <laughs> I mean, only out. did like five years. Matt really got fucked on his yeah, turn, wait, I, I want to say. It. I did try for 32 years. <laughs> Once my Dogecoin situation, like most people, did not work out, I say, you know what? I'm just going to be a librarian. And just read some books. And I guess this is just where I am now. You know, this I, this is stressful. I think and I just spend my time reading poetry and reading books. I know, you and know, learning. here's what happens. I just gave up. You stop fast forwarding and you just live in the moment and you like the inner light from Star Trek. You, <laughs> oh my you God. live out the just forty more years yeah, of your life. You, great you life. meet somebody, you fall in love <laughs> with them, yeah. you have a kid. Uh, you watch the kid grow up and resent you. Like you have a I whole fucking I watch American life. soccer become finally as good as European soccer. It's incredible. Uh, you live a wonderful life. My plan is perfect. You guys are just fucking me. No, my plan is good. You know I've got a plan. Okay. What's your plan? Save us, please. Okay, so when Scary is 15, she sees like an incident in a self-driving vehicle where like the <laughs> the air the airbag like comes out and like discharges when there's no crash or whatever. So in her loop around she sits in the driver's seat, gets hit by the airbag, like, in the chest, therefore sues the self-driving vehicle company for, like, injury and then also sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, roll to see if you can persuade the person driving this car to let you sit in the driver's seat. Because this is presumably not somebody you know. I got a 16. How do you convince them to let you in? Because you do it successfully. I'm just like, hey, can I drive your car? <laughs> And that works. I'll give you a cigarette. <laughs> it's a retro one. The ones that, like, there's no vape. Okay, so this is... Uh, it kills you just straight up. <laughs> you find a 16-year-old, very irresponsible driver, and you ask them to sit in their car, and you give them a cigarette. And so, as you predicted, or as you saw, the airbag inflates. You get hurt. It breaks your... Let me roll. Four. So it breaks a lot of stuff. It breaks your collarbone. It, it breaks your shoulders. <laughs> I broke my boob. Your boob is broken. <laughs> no. And you you sue. <laughs> and you want to sue for a million dollars? I mean, I would probably sue for more. But sure, let's say a million dollars. Now, I mean, now, sue now for more that makes you've sense. you've saved this other person, you've changed death's design. And now death is hunting down the other person to reset the course like in Final Destination. Damn, that's actually pretty cool. The other person's probably like a weird, dumb politician all about like tort reform now. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to sue them for negligence and for sexual harassment. And each of those, you're trying to sue them for a million dollars. So let's roll persuasion. <laughs> Wait, roll first to see the quality of lawyer you get. Ooh, okay. that's a good idea. Yeah, good. I guess your parents could invest in a good lawyer, and then that'll give you advantage or disadvantage. I have a, a six lawyer. Okay, so not, a, <laughs> not a great lawyer. Yeah. But, this but is you like still got a case, case. So you just got to roll normally. So you're going to roll first for negligence. Okay. Come on. 
Fuck yes, I got a 19. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, Hell so yes. with negligence. Roll for damages. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you get inspiration for that. That's Thank good. you. That's good. Roll for sexual harassment just because. Two. They, that's right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> fair. that's, that's fair. fair. They're, They're like, that's, that's a stretch. That's fair. That's, that's a stretch. I think that's fair. How much money did you get? She got a million dollars. I got a well, million. the average lawyer would take 40% of that. Oh, <laughs> oh, she got, oh, 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 I can do what everybody else's plan, oh, too. Oh, <laughs> you should have thought that before, Ben. <laughs> Can't take it back. Can't take it back when you're making a joke. Eight zero 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 D. Eight dollars. So you are you are 17 years old and you have $600,000. <laughs> How do you get four hundred thousand more dollars? We all worked to ruin each other's plans. I pay an elderly, grizzled <laughs> musician by the name of Billy Eilish to help me produce a single, and then it goes <laughs> hella viral, and I make roll performance. God damn it! <laughs> Come on! I got an eighteen. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> What's the song? Okay, What's yeah, the song? Yeah, Beth, yeah. we have to hear some yes, of the Yes, is it song. Butthole Ricochet? What's the song? Yeah. Butthole Ricochet, yes. And then the lyrics are... My boyfriend was a scorpion slut. I wanted to call him. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do. He's a scorpion. I didn't want to date a scorpion. <laughs> he turned into a scorpion. And now I'm just a scorpion slut. Or my scorpion slut boyfriend. <laughs> and then and then there's another like another thing that's like that was the sound that the pincher makes you know the thing with the poison that scorpions have the backup singer goes stinger stinger but it's romantic he's really put me through the ringer ringer, ringer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing a Billy Eilish song with like that moody vibe, and then apparently the guy from the Beat 52s <laughs> in the background just goes, "Is that Scorpion? Yeah. <laughs> Watch out, everybody! Cover your butts because here comes a Scorpion slut." <laughs> and we were stinging oh, and a pinching yes. in the Scorpion slut. Mrs. Nerfley looks at your score as the other two. <laughs> as the Red royalties X's. roll in. Yeah, the royalties roll in. You get seven trillion hits on Spotify and you make six. Oh my God, yes. As Scorpion Slut takes the billboards Billboard by storm, fighting. your money goes from 600,000, well, it went down to 400,000 to pay off Billie Billy Eilish. Eilish. And then by the end of your first month, you are a multimillionaire. You have $10 million at the bank and you're not even 25 yet. Mrs. Starfleet goes, oh my God, oh my God, that is a record. I can't believe, it. I can't, I, oh, this is what the sauce is all about, that speed, yeah, get him out, get him out. And she presses a button on her treadmill I made a promise. I told you that once once the record was beat, you would all go back to normal. So Mrs. Nerfley is nothing uh, if not a woman of her word. So the tinker, do it. And the tinker grabs the knobs on the machine and dials them all the way back. And your age is and you go back to the ages that you were before you got into the machine. I go, suck it, kindergartners. We won. The prods and the and the plugs and stuff like that release you from the machine yeah. and you are free from Chris, the machine and back in this life again. Where, where's where's my Chris? Where? Where Mrs. Nerfley goes, oh, she what? was never real. He was never uh, real. I, nothing nothing was real. It was all simulation in your mind, but you did such a good job. Well, not you. I had she children. <laughs> <laughs> I need to call my stupid mom. Link forgot he was in a simulation. Yeah. He became convinced yes. that it was a dream. You're back in reality and you don't have a family anymore. Uh, but scary, you, you you did it successfully. <laughs> Congratulations, you, you four are free to leave and the doors open up. Oh no, we're not gonna, we gotta stop you. Yeah, yeah can you not? Your, yeah. Go kids. I feel like this entire time, normal has been ineffectually tugging on the power cord for <laughs> the machine and has finally unplugged it the second you guys got out of the simulation. <laughs> it was bad that you're killing kids in the first place, but I gotta say, becoming a father, you really begin, oh it's just god. something <laughs> no. Oh my god, Matt, man. Even all the kindergartners like, oh my god. <laughs> the old kindergartners like, oh, I hear this fucking blue I, heart I, I can't stand here and watch you hurt young children. So we gotta, we're, I'm scared, but we're gonna stop. We're gonna, we're gonna oh, beat you up. Has it been 15 minutes? Has it been 15 minutes? What? Yeah. Oh, the fire department's coming. Oh, you're oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> man, I thought my life sucked before, but now I know it really sucks because then I got like this image of my life when I was like a millionaire, and now like I just feel doubly bad and doubly angry. How'd you get a million dollars? Oh, it's like a, it's a long story. I'm a fucking lawyer. 
<laughs> and, and, and Scary says fucking lawyer so loud and then like adjusts her collar and just like tries to look really cool. Like So yeah, in that moment, the San Dimas fire department, they would kick open the door, but the door's just open. And so they rush in with axes and, and fire extinguisher and they go, what's what's going on? And they see Mrs. Nerfley uh, running on the treadmill with one leg and they go, oh my God, we got to get you to an ambulance. We got to take you to a paramedic. And they see the old kids and like, oh my God, oh God, every, every all these kids need to go to a hospital. This is horrible. And they start grabbing the kids and just taking them out to the ambulance. Is there anything you want to do or are you just going to let them take it from here? Well, uh, <laughs> we, well the adults are here. Yeah. Is there, uh, hey, uh, Miss Nerfley, there, look, is there any way we can un-age these kids? Like, we de-aged. Can we de-age the kids? Come on. Hey, Tinker, do it. What do the firefighters say when they see the Tinker? I'm going to actually give them a roll to see if they notice the Tinker. 14. So they see the Tinker and they think it's just a weird, gross toy or something. But uh, Mrs... <laughs> I mean, you never had what to, like, to that toy. baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mrs. Nerfley says, like, the power must go to the machine and the tinker must de-age you manually from the outside. And that's the last thing she says is they pull her out to go to the paramedics. Who's like the lead firefighter? Probably the tallest one. The ta <laughs> I, go, I approach the tallest firefighter. I say, Normal Oak, I'm with daddies. These kids are with us. We need to de-age them. So just give us one moment here while we wrap this up. All right, roll persuasion. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Dude, that was gotta be a. I got a natural one. Wait, wait, Will, you got the reroll. You got the reroll. You got the reroll. inspiration. Yeah. You can spend it on this if you want to. Burn it. Burn it, baby. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Are you guys ready? Yeah. I got a six. Five. You know what it is? Is that it's that mascot costume you're still in? Yeah, you're still in. I'm still in the mascot costume, and I'm like, yeah, normal Oak. I'm with Daddy, so we've got an operation here. Situation's already been secured, gentlemen. So he pats you on the head and goes, "That's great, kid. Now, if you're," and he peeks into the mouth and he says, "Are you?" You're not hurt. No, you're good. You can go home. But yeah, no thanks, man. We got we got it. Whoever pulled the fire alarm, good job. Good idea. And uh, they just start <laughs> that taking was the kids me. out. Um, sir, <laughs> uh, sir, like, like, I mean, have you? Do you Look know at how these, to, yeah. Yeah, can you fix, like, do, Look what, at these Akira babies. Yeah, do you know how to fix, like, I'm telling you, just, you know, give us one kid. Let's just, let's give it. <laughs> give us one. Wait, what? Yeah. what? Just give us a try. Just just put one kid on the machine and it'll fix it. What's, what's the worst that could happen? Okay, so first roll perception before you see if what you said affected them or not. Yep, got a 17. As you're saying this, so you rolled a 17 perception, you see in the face of the fireman, of the very tall fireman, that he's alarmed, he thinks the kids are hurt here, but he doesn't seem to be behaving as if anything like crazy extra normal is happening. There's something uh, in his eyes that says like, this is bad, but this is just another day on the job. He's not freaking out in the way that a normal person would be upon seeing the scene that you've got in front of you. If I could tell that they didn't think it was normal, I'd probably ask instead, like, sir, what, what do you think is wrong with those kids? Oh, I, I mean, it's just something that happens to kids. Like, you know, it's, it's exhaustion or it's it's too much time online. It's, it's uh, they're probably dehydrated. <sighs> They've come down with poster syndrome. No, they, oh, look, no. They, they literally look like they're 80. They're going to die. They look like they're 80, 100 years old. Like, uh, I mean, they, they may look that way to you, but I'm sure once we get some water in them, you yeah. can, you know, some 30 Tylenol. blades of touchable grass. That. <laughs> Yeah, once we get them a little time outside, you know, get away from the internet a little bit, I think they'll be right as rain. You'll see. I search for clothes in the area. Okay. I would say that you probably find some spare soiled, like, shorts and a shirt from some kid who vomited on himself. Once. All right. I yeah. run around the corner. I take off the mascot outfit and I put on the, because I'm said I'm only in my tidy whities underneath, but this guy has not seen my face because I am. True. And <laughs> like you are a high clothes. schooler going to put on kindergartner size clothes. <laughs> I got to make it work, Wait. right? All right. Can I try something? Yeah. So we just have magic, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to. What a thrill it is to play Dungeons and Dragons with Daryl Wilson again. <laughs> I go, you, sir, I, something's going on. It's not normal. Watch here. Here, check this out. And I'm going to cast. Lay on hands on Mrs. Nerfley and heal her in front of all the firefighters. Okay. The boy has the gift. <laughs> all right, Let go the ahead. boy uh, try. Just, what is lay on hands? You just have to roll how much you heal. You have a pool of healing power that can restore 5 HP per long rest. Lincoln got a good rest before school, okay. as always. So 5 as HP. An, as an but what action, if she you can touch restores the HP and she's evil, And Matt. she did 7. Yeah, she lost 7. I'm going to use all 5. You, you, give her, you give her 5 Matt, HP what are you back. Doing? So all of her evil. leg except for her ankle and her foot come back. Okay. And... The, okay. Normal, picking up what Link is laying down, casts Cure Wounds to cure the other two inches of her foot I mean, I think whatever. the fact that half her leg came back would freak them out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this kid's that magical. <laughs> better, so, better make sure. So you, you heal her I'm all the way training. back. Her leg completely reforms, 
And the firefighters are looking down and go like, oh, I guess she wasn't as injured as we thought. We were just looking I, at her this weird. magic and in front of you. as she is healed completely up, she goes, ah, ha, 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 and reaches <laughs> up and grabs two of the firefighters by the necks. And you hear a loud, crack, as she like snaps their necks right where they, they lay and they, they crumple to the ground. And the kids go, ah, and the kids start running. And the paramedics are like, what? And she starts toward the paramedics and her veins are out again and she's attacking the paramedics. Guys, we should just go. <laughs> like, we yeah, blew like, this. I mean, I don't know. Do we have to like solve every job? <laughs> it's like, like you know how like with homework, it's like you can like do some of it, and then like you can do the rest of it like the next day. Scary, I'm 100 percent with you. We should just get in the car. <laughs> no, like it's like, wait, are they? De- are the firefighters dead? Yeah, do they die right from them. Yeah, and then what does she do? She turns around to see you, blood dripping from her lips, because she has just bitten the uh, carotid of a paramedic. Oh and God! She goes. Uh, you all were pretty fast, but let's see how fast you'll be the next time we see each other. <laughs> and then she takes off in a dead sprint, and boom, she is just gone. And the body of the paramedic that she was eating goes with her. I'm so sorry. I was just trying to... She's a nice lady. Uh, it was an interesting idea. I don't think it was the right one. I Scary, to... we gotta get in the car and get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Did we do it? Did we win? I yes. Mean... Wait, what about the kids? Fuck the yeah. kids. We <laughs> no, gotta go. Wait. Yeah, where are the kids? Yeah, are the the kids ki- she left the kids. She okay. didn't and what do we need to do to get the kids back to normal? Uh, put yeah, them, I'll put them the machine back in the machine and, and then tell Tinker to do it. At first, my plan was to bluff her into thinking I was a kindergartner she missed the first time around and that I deserve a chance to go just to keep her here. But now I feel like I'm going to look at all the other kids and be like, Fellow kindergartners, follow me, the biggest kindergartner, back to the room. I can save us. Roll persuasion with advantage yeah. because kindergartners are stupid. Yeah. I got a natural 20. Ooh. Great. So the kindergartners look to you and they go, ah, the uber kindergartner. <laughs> we will follow you anywhere. They're like the fucking aliens from uh, Toy Story. Aw. They're not going to remember like seeing two people murder in front of them, right? Uh, like... No, they will. They'll stick with them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> They'll have to deal with that forever. But yeah, they follow you, what, inside, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, cool. I lead the children back inside. I guess we need the help of Tinker, the, the, the goblin, Tinker, right? Yeah, the, the Tinker is still there. We'll All right, just I say, say it. Tinker, unold these kids. I demand it. Roll intimidation. Uh, da, 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 da. I got a 10. I'm going to say, I'm going to fucking kill you. That'd be intimidation, so go ahead and roll that if you want. Ooh, yeah, I got a 16. God, fucking Beth is saving us with her I, rolls. I, like, the first half of, like, my life, I was just getting bad rolls. I got, like three threes in a row. You say this to intimidate the Tinker, and the Tinker, having seen how adequately you behaved in the simulation and how smart you are, goes like, okay, 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 put them in the, put them in the machines. And then basically for the next half hour, he de-ages all the kids back to their original ages. All right. Good. Great. Well, every time a kid like comes out and we're, because it takes 30 minutes, like Lincoln's like teaching them how to like play soccer. And, like, oh my gosh, stop like, it. Out with these it's so cute. Teen Huddle. Hey, hey, so what are we thinking we should do with the Tinkerer? What I do we do? I think we should just kill that. Thing. I think we should just kill I kicked it really good. I don't know. I feel like we maybe could use some information from him. Just like, again, we don't know anything about what it. happened to our dads. So. Torture. This is, this is why, I mean, I've been hanging out with you guys for like one day and you're already talking about killing people. It's weird because like, I'm not the one with two firemen's con- Consciousness on my sword. <laughs> you know what? I'm not oh, the one with shit. blood in my hand, so Scary. yeah. That, that really hurt. Not as bad as it hurt for those families. Oh, yeah. You know what? You guys, do whatever you decide, I'm just one voice here, so you guys do <sighs> Maybe what Maybe we should bring to. this tinker back. Yeah, let's take him to the, like, homework center. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that sounds like okay. a plan to me. Hey, tinker, uh, you want to come with us? Uh, no. You want to come with us? Uh, roll intimidation again. <laughs> Shut up. I actually got a really good roll again. I feel like for the purpose of like the fucking podcast, we shouldn't even continue. Just kidding. I'm definitely <laughs> going to continue. I got an 18. Nice. Okay. So uh, he goes, <laughs> all right, fine. Just keep me away from that one. He says, pointing it scary. He shivers whenever you look at him directly in the eyes. We call all the kids' parents to come pick them up from school. <laughs> we go through the phone. As tree, you all do that, one. I go to the bodies, the firefighter Jesus. and the paramedic, Jesus. and I open up their wallets and I write their names down. And I, I'm going to write their families a letter later. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Since y'all made it real for Lincoln, that's what uh, Lincoln's doing. <laughs> Normal comes outside to check on Lincoln. He's like, Link, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I don't want to talk to to you right now. So uh, um, I'm, you know, it's a uh, hey. With this, I guess this is just what jobs are. So this was, <laughs> this was our job. Your badges vibrate, and May Hales says, "Hey, how'd it go? Is all done?" Agent Normal here. Status is 100 percent contained, except for the monster which did escape, and there's two dead adults. <laughs> uh, three, three. Though, don't forget the paramedic. Two firefighters were killed. We lost some good men today. By Mrs. 
Nerf, oh, Nerf yeah. Lee, who was a really nice lady, and then she was really mean now, and she, she killed two firefighters because I helped her, and a paramedic. No! No, Lincoln. You didn't help her. You were just trying to do the best you could. Yeah, you were Link, just trying you didn't to help heal. anybody. Why would you tell that to the families of, no, of Link. John, of <laughs> John Early and Sebastian Arnold? Sorry, yeah. I can't think of yeah, it. John Early, the star no, of, well, I of Search Party. That. I, thought, I thought you were doing a scene the face from Face Off. Off. Much. And, <laughs> what about the Dickus? <laughs> and Elizabeth <laughs> Dickus. Why would you tell them that I was just doing my best? You tell their families. You tell their I'll families normal. When the case breaks. Hey, what? also, May, can you, like, tell the school to get, like, maybe a sub? I don't think Mrs. Nerfley is going to be back for a long time. <laughs> can you also, like, let the town know that, like, don't start any fires because, like, we're down. <laughs> <laughs> we're down a couple firefighters. <laughs> that night. After you send an email to the families of the, <laughs> the handwritten letter, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, fine, a handwritten letter. <laughs> then two days later, you're Facts. awoken by a knock on your door, and it's the FBI going, "We understand that you know something about the deaths of these two firefighters and a paramedic." <laughs> And your dad, Mark, was like, uh, Lincoln? <laughs> All our days whisked away, but is there something more to say? You know that no one knows us better than ourselves. Used to tell myself it'll be alright. Pretty lies let me sleep at night. I know that no one knows me better than myself. And I know I'll get this right it's just a matter of time till we make it out of we gotta pick ourselves up and say not today no not today we live for tomorrow make steel and bow break where we can't change we gotta pick ourselves up and say Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Lincoln Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Normal Oak, Beth May as Scary Marlowe, and myself, Freddie Wong, as Taylor Swift. Theme song is On My Way by Maxton Waller, who also did some additional music for this episode. Brian Fernandez is our content producer. Ashley Nicolette is our community manager. Esther Ellis is our lead editor. Travis Reeves provides additional editing. And Robin Rapp is our transcriber. Special thanks this week to Paige Havener and Benson O'Malley for names that we used in this episode. This show has a Patreon. That Patreon has some people. And some of those people are named Stephanie Mech, Matthew O'Brien, Thomas Lewell, Kate Hazard, Jessica Scott Standiford, Flutter, Brad O'Connell, Brandon Mara, Adam Delano, Charlemagne, Roland Warman, Amanda Fordyce, Red Cat Studio, Coral, Seth L, Klutz Z, Frederick Winbald, Sebastian Shaw, Kate Mexicano, Martha Sparn, and Noah Carter. Join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Dungeons and Dads. If you're looking for more stuff to listen to, we got an after show called Teen Talk, where we dive into the episodes after we record them and answer listener questions. We also do Discord live listens and hangouts. There's so much more. If you join at any level, you get access to At the Mounds of Dadness, which is a prequel called Cthulhu Campaign, All That Jizz, which is a Star Wars miniseries, a Peyton Walter one-shot, VODs of all of our live shows, the upcoming Regency miniseries, Sons and Sons Abilities. That's so many hours of audio to spice up your commute or shower or dishes or whatever it is you do when you listen to podcasts. Me, I sit alone in a room with headphones, eyes closed, full attention on Ira Glass's sonorous voice. You don't have to do that, but you could at patreon.com slash Dungeons and Dads. Our website is dungeonsanddaddies.com. Our store is store.dungeonsanddaddies.com. Our Twitter, Dungeons and Dads. Our subreddit, Dungeons and Daddies. The next episode comes out Tuesday, February 22nd. We'll see you then. The average speed of a teenager is around 12 to 14 <laughs> miles per hour. Teen doesn't want to be fed. Many... He wants to hunt. <laughs> Damn. <laughs>
Holy shit. Get, get that off of your Google history, though, Matt. <laughs>